I'm sure most of you remember the dividing head from the gear cutting video. It's nothing special, it's just a no name import that I picked up for around 200 US dollars and you know what, it makes some pretty decent gears. Now even back then I had plans to convert this to CNC. The dividing plates and sector arms do a really good job of dividing. However, this can be a little bit slow, and I have made mistakes moving the sector arms, so I didn't divide it correctly. The dividing head also can't do every single gear with the standard plates. You can do most gears that you would run into, but if you look at the chart, you'll see quite a few gears missing. For example, 51, 53, 57, and 59. Now those typically aren't gears that I'd run into, but for an upcoming project, I need a 57 tooth gear, and since I have the dividing head, I thought I'd try and make it in-house. But like I said before, 57 divisions isn't possible with the standard plates. The obvious solution would be to make a 57 hole plate using the DRO and hole function, but I have a few other odd gears that I need to produce soon, plus it's also a really good excuse to CNC the dividing head, so I thought I'd do that instead. Now thankfully I have a spare 7 motor and control board left over from an old project, so I'll use that here. This one here is NEMA 23 and it should be powerful enough. NEMA 23 is just the size of the 7 motor, and you can get smaller or bigger ones, but this one should be fine. What I'm planning on doing is making a mount that will allow me to mount the 7 motor to the drive sleeve, and that should allow me to drive the worm shaft directly. I'll be making the main body of the mount from some 2011 free machining aluminium. I couldn't find any pipe in a suitable size, so I'll have to bore out the center. The ends are pretty roughly cut and they aren't seating too well in the chuck, so I'll first tap it so it's more concentric, and that should prevent it from wanting to rip itself out of the chuck. And there really isn't that much holding it in, so I'll have to be extra careful. The first thing I'll do will be to face the part with the half centre. I'll clean off the grease and switch over to a live center and clean up the outside. And I'll do the final pass with a round insert to get a better surface finish. Next I'll bore out the centre. With so little holding it in and no steady rest, I was tempted to bore it out on the mill, but the chuck was holding on pretty tightly, so I opted to do it in the lathe. I just made sure to keep the cutting forces as low as I could. I'll start off using my 8mm boring bars, and when I can, I'll swap over to the 12mm ones. I never had too much luck with these smaller ones, it just isn't rigid enough and there isn't enough material, and it usually ends up bending and chattering and leaving a pretty rough finish. I have considered buying a solid carbide one, though I'm sure a lot of the issues I'm running into can be attributed to the insert that I'm using. The insert just isn't sharp enough, although I know you can get sharper ones made for aluminium. With the first side done, I'll flip it over and dial it in and bore out the rest of the hole. The boring bar wasn't long or rigid enough to do the boring in one pass.
The final thing I want to do is machine a recess for the stepper motor pilot. I'm pretty sure that's the name for the circular extrusion that locates and seats the stepper motor. For NEMA 23, it's 1.5 inches in diameter, or about 38.1 millimeters in metric, and I want to get it as spot on as I can. And that's a really good fit, pretty much zero play in the connection. And that's the part done for the moment. Next I'll make the brackets that will allow me to attach the stepper motor to the mount and the mount to the dividing head. I'll make it from some 6mm aluminium plate. I would prefer to use 8mm but I don't have any. I'll put it in the fore jaw and I'll bore out the centre. Now for some reason I was really struggling with this aluminium. The data sheet says it's 5005 grade aluminium and I haven't machined it too much in the past. And looking online afterwards, apparently this stuff isn't all that nice to machine, at least compared to the 2011 I was machining beforehand. Because the carbide was getting me nowhere, I loaded up a broken end mill into a tool holder. The end mill is a good source of high speed steel for special cutters, and for jobs like this, I'd prefer not to use a good piece of high speed steel. Plus for boring bars, there's usually a lot of high speed steel that needs to be ground away and ultimately wasted. And you know what, that is not a nice looking tool. I've gone ahead and highlighted the cutting edge. It might look a bit odd, but this tool should work. It took a while to perfect, but it's starting to machine a lot better than before. This stuff really needed a sharp cutting edge to make a half decent cut. Now I'll stop just under the size of the main body. I want to press fit these two parts together rather than weld or braze them and I can feel that any more material removed would ruin any good press fit. And off camera I made another identical one. The first one would become a mount for the stepper motor to bolt onto. The first thing I want to do is square it up in the mill. Initially I held the part in the dividing head so I could get access to the four outside faces. However the part kept moving ever so slightly so I abandoned this. I squared up the part in the vise and even on a mill this stuff isn't great to machine. It left quite a few burrs which I'll have to file down. Next, I'll rest it on a 1-2-3 block as I clamp it in the vise. Next, I'll use the DRO to drill holes for the mounting bolts, which are 47.1mm apart. and I'll tap those holes for M5. And that's the part done for the moment. Next we'll complete the mounting ring. I'll mount it in the lathe and turn down the outside until it forms a ring. For a bit of peace of mind, I chucked in a piece of rod into the tailstock and placed it in the middle of the work. I've seen work held this way pop off before in other workshops and I just want to avoid that just for a bit of peace of mind. The rod should catch the work if it flies off. With that done, I moved the work over to the vise. 
I'm going to hold the mount in the dividing head with three bolts, so I'll set up a three hole pattern in the DRO. Next, I'll remove the drive sleeve from the dividing head and I'll pop it in the vise and drill the same hole pattern. As it turns out, it's made of cast iron and it drills really nicely. And I'll finish it by tapping the holes for M5. With the ring, square mount and main body done, we can now assemble them. I put the main body in the freezer for a few hours to help shrink it a bit. It's not liquid nitrogen, but it should help establish the fit and make hammering it in a little bit easier. I don't do too many press fits, my preference has always been for welding, plus I always found it difficult to get such tolerances with this lathe until I did a lot of upgrades, but the press fit is turning out to be really good. And that's a really strong fit, definitely no brazing needed. Plus, everything seems to line up really nicely. The final thing I need to do is make an adapter that will allow the coupling to connect to the worm drive. The first end fits into the coupling really nicely, so I'll turn down the other side. I turned down a little bit, and then I swapped over to a collet chuck. I'll turn down the outside, and then I'll bore the inside hole to size, since I don't have a suitable sized drill. and I'll take it to the mill to drill a hole for two set screws. The last thing I need to do is drill a hole in the shaft to allow me to have access to the screws. I was going to do this earlier, but I forgot. With everything done, I'll now assemble it. I'll first adjust the worm gear backlash, and then I'll bolt the sleeve in place. I'll then bolt on the main body, followed by the stepper motor and coupling. And that's the stepper motor on, and the build portion is done. And you know what, it actually looks pretty good. Now when I was first doing this, I was a bit sceptical of the amount of weight hanging off the sleeve, although looking at it, that won't be an issue. And that's about it for now. In the next video, I'll attach the motor to the control boards, set it up in Mark III, and hopefully get that 57 tooth gear cut. And with that, thanks for watching.